In this example, we're going to take a look at the Lens Flare plugin from Sapphire Plugins inside of Final Cut Pro. We'll take a look at some of the basic parameters within the Lens Flare, as well as some of the cool things you can do when using the matte input in terms of acting uh, out an obstruction pass or uh, some sort of color matte as well. Uh, for this example, I've just got a still image. This gentleman shot on a green screen on my uh, layer two. And on the track beneath him, just to have it handy, I've got a black and white matte cut out of him. So I'm going to start by just going ahead and applying a lens flare. So I'll go to my video filters and I'll uh, go to my sapphire lighting, throw in a lens flare. And uh, first thing I want to do is actually move the lens flare around just to show you how that's done. To do that, I've got my hotspot XY parameter. And I can go ahead and uh, move that around here. Go ahead and zoom back out. Click on my pivot point, and as you can see, it's going to generate crosshairs on the screen. So I can use that to actually move the lens flare around as I need to. Pretty nifty there. Um, what's very nice here is you've got the ability to actually adjust uh, many different parameters within the lens flare. I was showing you the hotspot first, but you've also got your pivot point. So if I want to, I can separately adjust my pivot XY point. Do that, I'll just click on the crosshairs, and then I've got my pivot point, which I can again, separately move and manipulate over time if I want to there. Uh, pretty useful. I can also turn off the external brightness of the pivot point as well. If I only want the hotspot, I've got the ability to go to my other brightness controls. And what other brightness does is controls the brightness of every element except for the hotspot. So that's pretty much always going to be your pivot point. I'll take the other brightness down. So if you want the hotspot only, very easy, you've got that. I'll take it back up to one here and uh, show you some of the other lens flares in the package as well. There are about 20 different types of lenses, maybe even more at this point. Uh, you can go to your pull-down menu and see all the different lenses you've got here. 35mm prime, 105mm, uh, again, many different lenses you can adjust. Uh, I'll jump over to the chroma arcs at the end. So I've got some pretty nice features. Um, when I go ahead and I click on my hotspot here as I move that, you can see it's got a nice rainbow chroma arc that moves around in tandem with the lens flare. So that's uh, some of the stuff you can do with the lens flare. Some of the more recent parameters we've added that's uh, in the newer version of Sapphire is the ability to control the total number of points coming out of the center. So I've got this raise number scale here, which is right there. You can go ahead and adjust the raise number scale. So that's going to, again, crank up the number of rays coming out of the center point. If you, of course, want no rays, you can just turn the number the scale to zero and you've just got your hotspot flare. You've also got the ability to extend the length of these rays or shorten the length with the rays length. So I can take the rays to uh, zero here, as well as animate them all the way out. Uh, but some of the really cool things you can do now with lens flare are uh, the ability to, to use this matte well. So when I go up here, I can show you I have a matte well, and it's just an empty well right now. So when it's empty, it's just using the lens flare, and it's just rendering the lens flare directly over whatever your object is. You can see there's no real sense of interactivity between the scene and the lens flare. Uh, we can change that by putting in an input to the matte well. And as I mentioned before, in my second layer here, or on my bottom layer, I have this black and white matte. You can leave this in your bin. I like to just keep it handy by keeping it on the timeline. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take that, I'm going to grab it from my timeline and drop it into the matte well. So now it's telling the lens flare to do a blend of the lens flare hotspot with whatever your color in your matte input is. In this case, um, beneath him, we'll just quickly look again and see it's plain white. So as I grab my hotspot and I start to move that around, it's uh, still just interacting and, and blending the lens flare with white. However, as I start to bring it behind his head, you can see how the lens flare is actually going to, I'll show you again, as we start to pass over where the black is, you'll see that the lens flare is actually going to pass behind him or fade out. It's giving the impression rather that it is passing behind him. As we move back over white, you've got the lens flare coming back into, uh, into, into view. So it's a, a pretty cool interactive sort of thing we've got to uh, determine, the, uh, determine the masking properties of a lens flare uh, when using a matte input. So in this case, I've just used a basic black and white input. What if I want something with some color in it? Well, I'll jump to my other example here, and just to save time, I've already added the lens flare, but um, on my stained glass clip here, which I'll show you with the lens flare on top of it, or off rather, uh, it, it's not doing anything interactive. I can go ahead and drag on the lens flare, and it's just sort of rendered the lens flare over the image. It's not doing any sort of dynamic interactivity with the colors. Uh, what I can do is just use this very same clip on itself as my matte input. So to do that, I'm actually going to go into my footage here, and I should have my stained glass clip here. Uh, I'm going to take that, I'm going to drag it, I'm going to drop it in in my matte well, and you can see it's actually interacting with the lens flare. It's uh, going to pick up the color of these different highlights, and now as I move the lens flare around, it's actually picking up all these different color highlights because it's using this actual stained glass clip, not only as a source clip, but as the source for uh, to do a blend mode for its light. 
So as I move this around here over black, obviously there's going to be uh, mixing with black, so no color. And as again, as I move it over some of the different colors, you can actually see it's picking up all these different highlights. So that's some of the unique stuff you can do with the sapphire lens flare. Just by having any sort of uh, matte input in your well, you can either use a black and white one for an obstruction mask or a colored one if you want to pick up some of the nice highlights like I've done in this example.